catch anything if they're not acted out. Someone please explain that to me. So how is it that this scene could even be in this movie? You know why? Because it's all propaganda. <laughs> Alright everybody, this is James from 9 Free Project. Remember to subscribe, share, and like this video. I appreciate all the new subscribers, everyone who has joined in on the conversation, and everyone who has become a part of the Free Agent Army. So go ahead and hit that notification bell, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I truly, truly appreciate all the support that has rolled in over the past couple of weeks. Now, like I've said before, it is Pride Month, so we are really going to attack some issues this month. Since there's a lot of events going on for Pride Month, I'm going to continue to roll out videos as much as possible during this time to try to flip this whole Pride Month thing over so people can get some clarity and truth behind what is truly going on these last days. I'm telling you, it's some, it's some crazy stuff going on. But let's go ahead and talk about this movie right here. So now if you don't watch the show, you know, it's not for everybody, but I've been tuning into this and the new season just started and the show that I'm referring to is Pose. If you've never seen Pose, Pose is about the black and Hispanic gay ballroom scene up in New York. And it follows the lives of these young uh, transgenders and, and gay boys and girls through their lives in, in living in this scene in the whole time frame of like the early, uh, the late 80s to the 90s. And the, the, the atmosphere around homosexuality, around the gay lifestyle during that time. Now, it borrows uh, some elements from the movie Paris is Burning. So if you've never seen Paris is Burning, it's on Netflix. And the thing with me is that I sort of lived this because I was out there during in the 90s and all of that when a lot of this was going down. So it sort of resonates in a way that I can see some elements there and it's like, okay, wow, that's, you know, that's interesting how they pulled that part out. But now, being a born-again believer, at this point, when I look at it, I can see how the creators of the show are using this, and they're using it as a medium in order to push an agenda. And why do I say that? Excuse me. I say that because as I watched episode one of season two, the premiere, last night, I saw a lot of falsehoods and lies that they were perpetrating throughout this entire show. Now, I'm going to give you three clips. And these clips are going to show that this is really a spiritual battle, what we're dealing with here. And it's no, it is no coincidence that, number one, this premiered during the month of Pride. Uh, number two, Billy Porter is getting all of this play. He's getting all of this airtime. The media just loves him right now because he's playing that part of male. He's playing that part of dressing up in, in the uh, gender fluid stuff. So the, the, the media is really, really loving on him. I mean, he was recently on a Good Morning America. Uh, of course, everyone saw him in that dress going to the Met, the, the uh, outfit for the Met Gala, and then him going on the red carpet. I mean, there's so much press behind Billy Porter right now. And you know what? Kudos to you in the fact that, you know what, you're a talented brother, and God bless you in those talents. However, in one of the things that I heard you say the other day, as being a black, gay, and Christian man, you know, I, I then when you start trying to tie Christianity and your homosexuality together, then I become like, uh, well, bro, you need to back up off that because that's an oxymoron. So we're not going to get into that. But the thing is, is that this show is being used to push an agenda. And I'm going to show you three clips. And with these three clips, you will see that, number one, there's a lot of lies in here. Number two, this is all about the church and the world in a spiritual battle. You'll see that there's a battle between darkness and light. You'll see there's a battle between those who represent the church and those who represent, I guess you can say, the world in homosexuality. And how this is all coming to play. And, and again, it is... It's no coincidence that all this gender bending and all of this transgender stuff in this show, all of this is coming to a head right about now. So we need to pay attention to what's happening. So with that being said, this first clip here, and it's rather interesting that they talk about the group ACT UP. Now, well, excuse me, let me back up. The name of this, the name of this episode is ACTING UP, and it is a, a play on words to the actual social political group, the gay activist group ACT UP. Now, uh, ACT UP, that group, they started back in uh, the late 80s, around about 87, out of Manhattan in New York. And, and they were a political action group that was trying to get more 
funding to go behind HIV AIDS research and getting the government to become a, a little bit more involved because this disease has started to develop and a lot of uh, men in the uh, LGBTQ community was catching this disease and they were trying to find out what's going on so they felt like the government wasn't doing enough to try to uh, halt the, uh, the spread of this and they felt like the church wasn't being compassionate and that the church wasn't helping uh, as well and and making it seem as though the church was spreading lies and not necessarily trying to help people so the group act up they were very forceful in the things that they did they were very outright they were very bold they were very in your face they did not shut up they they did what they were going to do in order to bring attention to this particular issue of hiv aids now in this particular scene you see them at a rally, an underground rally, when it's starting, uh, and they were, uh, I guess, rallying the troops for an upcoming piece of activism at a church, and they had been done some fundraising. So check this out, and what you'll see is that number one, she told some lies because she tried to quote that the uh, the Catholic Church had been spreading false information, saying that number one, condoms don't work, and then number two, abstinence is ineffective to the spread of HIV/AIDS. Now, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but if you have Johnny number one over here who is HIV negative and Johnny over two, or over here number two, who is HIV positive. Now, if they were using a condom, if the condom, <laughs> I don't mean to be funny about this, but if they were using a condom, now, would the condom help? Absolutely. Now, is it 100% effective? Absolutely not, because it can break. Number two, in that same scenario, if they were being using un, and having unprotected sex, is there a greater risk in, in, in transmitting that disease sexually? Absolutely. Now, if those two practice abstinence, this one knows his status. This one doesn't know uh, the knows status as well as being negative. This one being positive, and neither one of them ever has sex again. They abstain from any temptations and, and, and acting out. How is this one going to spread if they're not acting out? How is this one going to catch anything if they're not acting out? Someone please explain that to me. So how is it that this scene can even be in this movie? You know why? Because it's all propaganda. You have certain groups that want everyone to co-sign on their poor behaviors and choices. No one's saying, okay, you feel like you're born that way? Okay, that's fine. You feel like you're born that way. But what you do with that is up to you. And how you, how you express that is up to you. And then you can't get mad at other people because they don't have compassion when your actions led to consequences. And again, when the church comes back and says, well, if you do it God's way and abstain, then you don't have to worry about that. But yet, you want to be mad at the church and get all upset because your community is dying. And this is during the 80s and 90s that they're dying. And you want to be mad at the church because the church was telling the truth. But anyway, check the scene out. Here it goes. They're brought in $650,000. Now we finally have the cash to meet our momentum. This Sunday's protest up at St. Patrick's Cathedral is an even more crucial step in starting a global conversation around HIV and AIDS. <laughs> into the world that condoms don't work and that abstinence is the only way to fight HIV that is a lie. And it is morally wrong. So, we're staging a die-in in the middle of that congregation as a peaceful protest against the annihilation of our community. Cardinal John O'Connor has said, Morality is good medicine. He might as well say, let them get AIDS. And it's not just the Board of Education or the City Council that Cardinal O'Connor is influencing. No. He has a direct line to the Pope himself. We will not allow his racist, sexist, homophobic ideologies to affect the health of every single person on this planet. <laughs> Now, 
in this particular particular scene, you have the transgender who she's a little upset and she's going to quit the job and so forth. And here again is the attack against the church. Listen to what the lady says with regards to her spiritual beliefs and then what this person is saying. And so it, again, it, it's this thing against being against the church as though they're better than everybody else. Now check this scene right here. You, you're going to see this interaction between two people, one representing the world and one representing the church. And you see how this is being played out because at, in the end of the day, and this has been going on in movies and shows and television and magazines for a long time. It makes the Christian person look bad and it makes the other person, again, into this victim and as though the victim is taking control of their life and they're pushing away religion. They're pushing away relationship to God. They're pushing away that that represents God, the good, uh, or, or any form of religion. You don't have to give this to someone else. I'm the owner. I need you to work. You know I never turn down work, but my friends are counting on me. You're ungrateful. I let you work here because I am a good Christian and please, I have to leave. So quit. You know what? You're right. I quit. I'm not wasting whatever time I have left on this earth to give any part of me to you. You should kiss my feet for hiring you. No one else will. You will see. Ladies like getting their nails done by ladies. Now in this final scene, what you're going to see is that you have the group act up and Billy Porter, uh, of course, playing Pray Tell, him and his, and his house his, well, his his band of friends, his house, they go to this church, and this is a part of the uh, a quote of ACT UP scene. And this is what ACT UP did back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, they did a lot of things like this. And this is part of one of the things that also, and it's interesting they didn't put this in there, but ACT UP also participated in some things with the, uh, with the American Psychological Association uh, where to where they had the uh, had homosexuality taken off of the DSM. It wasn't because of any empirical data that proved that homosexuality wasn't a mental disorder or anything of that nature, but it was more so, this is something social, this is how we feel, this is who we are, and so there's nothing wrong with us, so this needs to come off the books. And because they quote unquote act up and they put a lot of pressure on the boards of the APA, then these then changes occurred because of that. And it's not necessarily because of empirical data was found, it was more so because of political action. That's all it was. It, it was a political chess move. And, and, and they were very successful in that. But look at this scene right here. The act up at the church. You see the representative of God just sitting down with his hands in his head. And they were literally going in, go into the church and just tear the place apart and say, we don't want, we don't want what you have to offer. As though the church, what the church was offering, abstinence and saying uh, condoms, then as though that is not effective in the spread of uh, sexually transmitted diseases, which I don't understand how anybody can sit there and, and formulate in their head that abstinence doesn't work. You may not be able to express yourself sexually, but trust and believe abstinence works. Greet one another with a holy kiss, but all the holy ones need you. In the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. One thing you have to note about this is that this entire thing is about God versus Satan, light versus darkness. Look at this scene and see what's going on. Listen. So they would rather blame the spread of HIV on the church as opposed to personal behaviors. So this group act up 
started acting up and look at the now desperate preacher representatives of the church And those who played the victim has, have used that phrase forever. Shame on you. As though what they're doing is virtuous. So as you can see, this whole thing is all about the world versus the church. I want my sex, and but, and, but I don't want your religious hands in it. That's all it is. That's all it is. And it's pushing an agenda to push... To make the church look bad and to make those who want to walk in their sexual preference look good. Those who want to express themselves sexually and to and, and live lifestyles that, com that are converse or deviant. You know what? Just go ahead and have your way. Do what you want to do. And the church, keep your mouth shut because I don't want to hear it. That's basically what all of this is all about in this first episode of, uh, of Pose. So, anyway, I just wanted to drop those two cents down to you and let you know that, you know what, if you're watching this show, be careful. I'm going to be watching this simply because I'm going to be picking apart and seeing where, okay, this is a lie. That is, that's not true. They're, again, they're using emotionalism to draw you in. And, again, it's playing that whole victimhood thing it's to say, okay, you know what, we are downtrodden people and we're going to, you know, so now we, we need to go out and just and just take over the world. And if you don't accept us, we are going to drive it down your throat until you finally accept us. And you're going to do more than tolerate us. We are going to be a part of your everyday life in every fabric of America. And that's, and that's where we are right now. So anyway, all right, so this is James from Free Project. Remember, Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah.